All right, Chicago, we are back. And it's time for us to continue our year four offseason with your Chicago Blackhawks. We're up here at free agency. I uh, didn't do much in the last video other than the NHL entry draft just because this is the last year where the window is open for Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, and Sergei Bobrovsky to win a Stanley Cup. Um, even if they don't retire and come back again next season, their overalls are going to drop off in a big way. So you can make the argument that uh, our team this year is going to be the best that the Chicago Blackhawks team will be unless I go through a, uh, a rebuild or a retool, right? Now, free agency. What should we go after? I was reading your comments. Some people saying to trade away like Jackson Kostopoulos because he doesn't sim so well, but he's got a lot of trade value. Now, Jackson was our year one, uh, what was it, first rounder? He's 84 overall, 21 years of age. He's got a crap ton of trade value, and he's only had one season in the NHL. Last year was his rookie season, 32 points and 82 games played. Uh, we were hoping for a little bit more out of him. We were hoping that he could win the Calder. But if you look at look at his individual stats, he's, he's great at taking the puck away. He throws the body. He's more of a two-way forward, but also a playmaker. Only 102 shots in 82 games played. Now, it was on the third line, but uh, I'm thinking that this season, we try to put him alongside of Patrick Kane, because Patrick Kane is that pure shooter. He's had 269 shots last season. So put somebody who takes the puck away and gives it to Patrick Kane so that uh, Kane can give him all the assists and Kane can get all the goals. Now, the question is who should be the center for that first line I was thinking that in their last season why not go Kane Taves and Kostopoulos because Taves is more of that that power forward two-way guy while Kostopoulos will have the offensive playmaker numbers and then Kane can just score all the goals and that will leave us hang on a sec and that will leave us with a second line of Artemi Panarin, Dabrinkit, and either Nemesnikov or Bjorkstrand. So I could always try that out because Bjorkstrand is more of a power forward also. He does throw the body. Um, hang on a second. Let me just sort by overall. I think we have nine forwards right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we have nine. Then the third line could be Schmaltz, Nemesnikov, and Andronov. Or maybe Andronov or Nemesnikov get moved up to the second line. And Bjorkstrand maybe plays the third line this year, even though he's got four years left. Maybe it's Dabrinkit who plays the third line this year. Power play, uh, don't worry. Dabrinkit, Panarin, and Kane will be on the same power play together. But it's, I think Jack Jackson Kostopoulos will actually play very well with Patrick Kane. So all we need is our 9th, 10th, and... Uh, or our 10th, 11th, and 12th forward. And I need penalty killers, because the only penalty killer that I want to use on this team, I don't want to use Taves on the PK, just because that's going to take away his ice time for 5-on-5 five and five power play. I want to give. I don't want to use Jackson Kostopoulos on the PK either. He's going to get power play time and 5-on-5 five five time. I want it to go to Nick Schmaltz. Can't give it to Nemesnikov or Andronov. Those guys are both pa uh, playmakers. So we got to find three defensive players that we could bring in and we also got to find a goaltender our blue line is already set we got to get three forwards a backup goalie and then any kind of depth that we could pick up just in case injuries happen so let's go back to free agency here uh ufa forwards there's a lot of great forwards gino malkin let me just sort by overall here for a second. Gino Malkin, Nazem Kadri, Vincent Trocek, Nino Niederreiter, who we had but we had to drop. Uh, even though we could afford him, it doesn't really fit in on our team. We need guys who can keep the puck out of the net. So I'm actually going to go down here. Pajot, he's a playmaker. We already have too many playmakers on this team. Uh, Michael Furland, here we go. All right, so we got ourselves a grinder. Michael, Michael Furland, take a look at his stats. 27 points last season. Doesn't take penalty minutes for a grinder. Uh, plus three. And more takeaways than giveaways. So same kind of uh, numbers as Jackson Kostopoulos defensively. And we will use this guy on the third or fourth line. And uh, he will be a penalty killer. All right. So Michael Furland, I'm going to offer you a contract. I'm going to give you a one-year deal. At uh, I want to make sure I get him. Yeah, 2.5 will work. One year, 2.5 for uh, Michael Furland. Next, uh, we go down here, Joe Pavelski. Joe Pavelski would be a good one to pick up. But he's more of a, uh, a goal scorer, more of a shooter. I know he's a two-way forward, but 202 shots last season. Uh, yeah, I mean, he can get you a 30-goal year. But if I go all the way down here, he doesn't look like he's throwing too many hits anymore. And uh, his takeaways to giveaways, it could be a little bit better. The point is, he's offensive. And he's dropping off. He's already 37 years of age. So come the playoffs, he might drop to like a 78, 77. We don't need that. So we're going to continue to go down here. Riley Shahan. All right, so I'm looking for penalty killers. This guy, more takeaways than giveaways. He does throw the body, although last year, more giveaways than takeaways hmm. he might have gotten better hang on let me take a look at his stats doesn't take too many penalties he was a plus three 25 points last season 
All right, Riley Shahan, he was another one I was thinking of. Uh, let me go down here. Andrew Shaw, another grinder. So we picked up Michael Furland, who's a grinder. Andrew Shaw, who's a minus 23 last year. He doesn't take too many penalties, but oh yeah, yeah, I remember we uh, changed the uh, the power play setting, so you're going to see more power plays this season. But more takeaways than giveaways, all right? So we can trust this guy as well, and he can kill off some penalties. So Andrew Shaw, all right, welcome back to the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. He's a top nine, so all we need him for is one more year. That's fine. And uh, if we go down, Cassian. No, I think I'm going to go with uh, Riley Shahan as our fourth line center. What about JT Comfer? Hang on. Let's see what this guy's all about. He's a two-way forward, right? I think so. Yeah, he's a two-way forward. What kind of numbers did he put up? Ooh, he actually does take the puck away a lot. It looks like this guy could be trusted defensively. And, yeah, I don't know what his face-off rating is at, but you know what? We'll go JT Comfer. I can afford him. All right, so JT Comfer, one year at uh, two points... Yeah, 2.750 should do it. All right, very good. And then we just need that backup goalie. And then the rest, I'll get some depth players for us. Don't worry about that. Pavlik, no. War, Jonathan Bernier, uh, Darcy Kemper. No, I just need somebody who doesn't cost a lot. Luis Domingue. Domingue only costs $1 million. That'll probably be, be enough. We're going to make it into the... Yeah, let's get Luis Domingue. Here we go. All right, one year at uh, one point. 0-5-0, all right? So there it is. There's free agency, ladies and gents. We already have our blue line. We have our starting goaltender. We have our offense. We have our power play. We just need defensive players who can kill off uh, penalties and uh, not ruin our... Uh our goals against over the course of the regular season. So Michael Furland is a member of the color, uh, Chicago Blackhawks. JT Confer, same thing. And Andrew Shaw, welcome back. All right, and Luis Domingue. Perfect. So those four players have been signed. Let's go to free agency here. And how much cap space do we have available? We have $2.4 million of cap space. So I'm going to uh, go through free agency and just sign some players. Actually, no, I might as well just wait till preseason to do that. Sign some players for some depth in case we have any injuries to deal with. So let's jump to preseason and take it from there. All right, so here we are at preseason. We already simulated the first game just because I had some free agents to sign. Wanted to make sure that they all accepted. Uh, but it's ready to, uh, or we are ready to edit our lines for year number five. So let's go through this together. Uh, first, let us make sure that we have all the right players on the roster that we want. We still have to uncover their overalls and their uh, potentials, but for right now, we'll be all right. So Bobrovsky, I also picked up uh, Jack Campbell just because I didn't know if Puninovs was going to be ready. So we're going to leave Puninovs in the AHL for right now. We're going to start the season with Bobrovsky, Jack Campbell, and Domingue. Don't know who's better, Jack Campbell or Domingue, and don't know if we're going to have a, a goaltender injury. So I'm just going to bring up... Uh yeah, I'm going to bring up both those guys. Defensemen, Bockvist, Yokoharju, Sanheim, Ekholm, Schmaltz, Jensen, and Galvis. Yeah, same as last season. I also picked up Mackenzie Weger and uh, Snuggerud just in case. So we have, um, we have three uh, depth defensemen that we can always use. And forwards, let me see, how many do I have here? I uh, picked up uh, Corrali, Sean Corrali, and Stefan Mateau. I know they're only 77 overall, but we needed some depth. Don't know if Kurt Adams is going to be ready for the NHL, but on the NHL squad, Kabanoff is up here. I might even just scratch Kabanoff. I don't know if he's going to be ready or not, so let me just scratch Kabanoff. And uh, in the system, let me bring up Sean Corrali, all right? There you go. Okay, so in the NHL squad, Crowley would be the uh, depth guy, and then everyone else, Shaw, Comfer, uh, Furland, Androna, Schmaltz, yeah, that's the bottom, and then Nemestikov, let's say the bottom six, and then the top six. Okay, so we have to uncover all these guys. We don't know if Patrick Kane, he's got the uh, top six. We don't know if that's dropped down to a top nine. Hopefully it hasn't. Same thing with Jonathan Taves, and uh, I wonder if Sergei Bobrovsky has lost his medium elite. Now we can go into the line changes. Now I won't uh, waste too much time. I might even do some power of video editing. But here was the idea that I had, right? Jackson Kostopoulos, right up there. Jonathan Taves, right up there. I know they're both two-way forwards, but they play different styles. Taves can actually get some goals. He does take more shots than... Uh then Jackson, I mean, see Taves, he's even, uh, no, that's not a season. It's all these years. 189 shots, 183. You put him on the first line, he'll be able to take shots. So Kostopoulos is the playmaker. Taves is the uh, the two-way guy to get the puck back, and Kane is the goal scorer. And if these guys, if they're in their last year of their $10.5 million deal, let's play them together, see what we can do, and see if we can jack up Jackson Kostopoulos. That leaves Alex Debrinkit on the second line. I might even move him over to the left wing because he doesn't have great face-off stats. Uh, Nemesnikov, who's got, uh, 
better faceoffs. He's the playmaker. And Oliver Bjorkstrand. All right, so two snipers and a playmaker. Now, I could keep them together, but then Artemi Panarin's on the third line. We don't want that. We, we want Artemi Panarin on the uh, second line. So Panarin... Uh, you know what, I might even keep uh, Nemesnikov, like, right here, and Bjorkstrand right here, because they played great on the same line. Then we can go Dabrinkit, Panarin, and Andronov, right? Because Andronov was that playmaker. Dabrinkit is kind of like a, a mix of both. He does uh, he does shoot the puck, but he's also a great playmaker. Yeah, he's capable of getting 200 shots. Um... So he'll be setting up Panarin, but Andronov will give him the chance because he was 81 overall last season. He might have jumped up to an 82, 83 overall, and his passing's up there at 99. His offensive awareness is only 86, but we could try him out on that line and see what happens. All right, so Dabrinkit, Andronov, Panarin, and that frees up us to have a very good third line. Bjorkstrand, Schmaltz, and Nemesnikov. Now, I can always move up Nemesnikov to the second line like that. All right, I can always move up Bjorkstrand like that. There's plenty of things that we can do. Let's just see how Andronov plays with Dabrinkit and Panarin, okay? Nemesnikov, Schmaltz, and Bjorkstrand. It's a great third line. And then the fourth line, JT Comfer down the middle, Andrew Shaw on the right, and Michael Furland on the left. So those are the three defensive players that we signed. I like this team. I like this setup. I just wish uh, Duncan Keith, I mean, not Duncan Keith, with, uh, I wish Taze and Kane were like, you know, two, three years younger. 31, 32, and they're at 33, 34. They're definitely dropping off. So Yoka Harju and Bockfist. No, we're going to go Bockfist and Sandheim. Yoka Harju and Ekholm. Uh, Nicholas Jensen is getting his chance to play in the NHL this season. The replacement for Duncan Keith alongside of Jordan Schmaltz. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to go through the rest of the lineups myself, and then I'll just give you guys a quick summary. We don't need to make all the changes. Let's get to the simulation. Okay, so I've got the lines all ready to go. You already know the offensive core. We're going to keep an eye on Andronov. The second and third line, we might be shaking them up, and also Kostopoulos on the first line. Uh, defense looks the same. All right, now here's where we get to the fun part. So this team has a lot of four forwards offensively but only two offensive defensemen so i'm going with four forwards on each power play okay so here's where you know how we put uh, kostopoulos and taze with kane here's where his old teammates get to play with them to bring it panarin bockfist kane and kostopoulos is on the point the reason i'm putting jackson kostopoulos on the point is because he can be trusted defensively he has those defensive stats he's fast and he's got the passing at 95 and offensive awareness at 90 i know he's not taking shots but he can just be another playmaker back there for these guys okay i was thinking about putting him on the left wing and putting Panarin on the point, but I'd rather use Panarin's uh, ability to uh, to put the puck in the net rather than Jackson Kostopoulos's. Uh, second line, Bjorkstrand, Taves, and uh, Nemesnikov. I went with Andronov on the wing because his passing is at 99, and I don't really trust this guy to play the point, but I want to see if he can get any power play points for us, all right? So Nemesnikov and Kostopoulos are both on the uh, the blue line, and Bokvist and Yokoharju are the uh, D-man being used. The four-man power play, Dabrinkit, Kane, Panarin with Bokvist, Taves, Bjorkstrand, Nemesnikov with Yokoharju. So we're really stacking up offensively. Penalty kill, Nick Schmaltz, and Michael Furland, JT Comfer, and Andrew Shaw. And because we're using only two defenders on the power play, that frees up the other four defenders to really get all their ice time here. Travis Sanheim, uh, Jordan Schmaltz, Nick Jensen, and Matthias Ekholm on the PK. And again, Sandheim, uh, Schmaltz, Ekholm, and Jensen. So no Jonathan Taves on the penalty kill. I want all of his time to be 5-on-5 five and five power play. 4-on-4 four four to bring Kit Kane. Uh, Taze, Panarin, and Nemesnikov, and Bjorkstrand. All right, so the young guys are not playing on the 4-on-4 uh, four four lines. 3-on-3, uh, three three, same thing. Looks like that. Uh, extra attackers, we have Kane and Panarin, who are both on different lines this season. And shootout, Kane, Panarin, Dabrinkit, Kostopoulos, and Dronoff. Uh, scratch players on the bench, we have Jack Campbell as a backup goalie. Sean Corrali as a backup forward. And uh, Jacob Galvis as a backup defenseman. All right, so I think that is it. AHL, oh right, in the AHL squad. Here's the good news about the AHL squad. We still have to uncover these guys. Don't know how much they've grown. But uh, in the system, Kurt Adams, low elite. Kabanov, low elite. Johnson, medium top six. Chabarov, medium top six. Varlamov, low elite. All right, so five guys in the top six that we're trying to grow. I think this guy, Kabanov, he's also medium top uh, medium top six so six forwards in the ahl that we're trying to grow and uh defenseman uh kari koivu medium top four vishnevsky medium top four and uh korosov medium top four so those three guys hopefully they can grow to fill in and uh support yoko harju and bockfist and of course the man to replace bobrovsky maxim puninovs this guy's 21 years of age 76 overall he's got the starting position we have to get like a good month in to see if these guys are good at all uh, good at all but we'll get there. Now, hang on. Before we uh, continue, last season's uh, 
last season's uh, lack of penalties really hurt everyone's point total. So if I go back to rules, I just want to show you guys. I found that penalties on 4 of 4 was way too much, so I'm going down to 3 of 4, okay? Uh, 4 of 4, I mean, it's just uh, the amount of penalties that happen in the real-time simulation when you get to the playoffs. It's just not good. 3 of 4 is good. You get a bunch of guys with 30-plus power play points, all right? So that is that. It's your year five Chicago Blackhawks. Let us take it up to around the trade deadline. Doesn't matter if we're playing well or if we're not playing well. Uh, we're going to stop the video at the trade deadline. And the reason is, is because uh, I've already said this, but this is the last year of our window to win a Stanley Cup with our veterans, Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves and Sergei Bobrovsky. So uh, going all in at the trade deadline. Yeah, that might be something that we look into. Trading away our first and uh, really bringing back some assets. But um, for anyone saying that we should trade away Jackson Kostopoulos because of that trade value, I won't argue the point that the trade value is way up there. I mean, if we combine Jackson and a first, we could arguably get any player in the game. But at the same point, it was his rookie season last year. And uh, we, we were trying to figure out where to play him. We have a lot of older guys. I mean, a guy like Jackson Kostopoulos, he should be playing on that first line. Do, and we should be doing everything in our power to get him points. So that's what I'm doing this season. He gets to play with Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. All right, so uh, please designate your players the minors. Okay, already done it. And we are ready to start up year number five. So 4-1-1 one, one in preseason. Good preseason start. Let's see what we do on the road against the St. Louis Blues. So I'm really keeping an eye on that first line. And also, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Andronov on the second line. So Rockford player Nikita Chabarov has been injured. That's one of our guys. So I'll just uh, replace player. When he comes back, i got to make sure to get him back in. I think he was the third line center. Don't know. And a good start to the, uh, to the year for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, yeah, he's back. I might as well go put him back in. So last year, what we were, we were the, the fourth best team in the NHL, something like that. We just missed out on the President's Trophy, so we should be uh, we should be just fine here. Kavanaugh, who was Chabar? I know it's Broadhurst. Yeah, there you go. Hang on, Chabarov. Let me just get him back in. Boom, playmaker. I don't know. Yeah, we don't have these guys uncovered just yet. We're gonna have to go a good month for the scouts to uncover, and then if we know some AHL players are ready from the NHL, I might even bring them up, shuffle the lines a little bit. But so far, so good. A three nothing start or three and zero start to the season in year number five, and a one nothing loss. Come on, boys, you're not helping out Sergey Bobrovsky back there. I mean, we have a lot of good young talent. It's just unfortunate with the... Oh, my God. Injured elbow. Estimated return is October 26th. All right, I'm just going to replace the player. October 26th is like a week away. Uh, Central scouting. Yep, there you go. Jackson Gustafless goes down with an injury. Uh, Luke Snuggerud has been injured with a mild concussion. What the hell? The injuries that... We got hit with one injury last year. And now in the first month, we've already been hit with a few. Three, right? My God. All right, so without Jackson in the lineup, let's see. All right, so one nothing victory, all right. And Jackson is available to play. I'm just going to continue because I don't want him to get injured again. The next game against Arizona, he should be ready. Snugger Rudd, same thing. Let me just continue. Stop the sim. We'll go all the way up here, up against the Arizona Coyotes. Back out. So a 7-1-0 and oh start. Seems like uh, things are working out for us. Panarin on that second line is just doing fine. And uh, with everyone's power play numbers, should, that that should skyrocket. We should be in a good spot. So Sean Corrali played. Two games played. He was a plus two. Good job, Corrali. All right. So Jackson Kostopoulos, get your ass back out there. All right. Ooh, 85. I think we figured out. Yeah, we've uncovered the scout. Let's just go. Let's just go to the end of the month, and then I'll come back in just in case. All right. So 85 overall for Jackson Kostopoulos. Good. So let's go back to the calendar, and let's get to the end of October. Just that last game against the Edmonton Oilers and just see if, uh, if any of the AHL guys are ready for the NHL. I don't. I mean, the way we're playing right now, I don't want to mess with this team. Oh, my God. 10-3 victory over the Arizona Coyotes. We're scoring goals. We're keeping the puck out of the net. The power play should be killing it now with four great forwards and also more power plays being taken. 10-1-0 to start the year for the Chicago Blackhawks. All right, so if this is our last chance to get a Stanley Cup, it's a good start to the year. Edit lines. Oh, man, my window's open. Somebody's freaking flying by my head. Can you guys hear that? What the hell? It's it's 1246 at night. Slow the hell down. Uh, all right, so Jackson Kostopoulos up at 85 overall. See, he's not really a goal scorer. This is why I'm putting him on that first line. A plus one, nine, uh, or uh, nine games played, six assists. All right, take a look at those individual stats. His passing went up to uh, 96. Good. Jonathan Taves is a plus three. He's got eight points. And Patrick Kane, he's a plus four. And he's like their point per game. So Kostopoulos is not slowing those guys down. So that's a good first line. Panarin, uh, yeah, he's a plus. He's got uh, 13. But that's great. Plus six. Uh, Debrinkit, yep. So Andronov, yeah. Andronov is a fine player. He is simulating just fine on that second line with Panarin and Debrinkit. Good. So that passing 
That might have been the perfect playmaker to put alongside of those two guys, all right? So that works out. Uh, Nemesnikov is a minus four, but he's got seven points. Schmaltz, he's an even player, six points. Uh, all right, so that uh, third line, it's, it's, there's always going to be somebody who suffers, but we're winning. We're 10 and 1, so I'm not going to change that up. And Furlins, yeah, the fourth line is a plus. All right, so really good. Real good. Defensively, Sandheim and Bockfist, they're plus 4. Ekholm, plus 7. Jensen and Schmaltz, plus 4. So 5 on 5, we're playing great. And that should mean that Sergei Bobrovsky is a 9-5-2 save for say. Yeah, he's killing it. He's pissed off at what happened last year. Does he... Okay, so Bobrovsky, I didn't look at the potentials. Bobrovsky has his starter potential. So say goodbye to the 90-plus overall for next season. This is the last year that we have Sergei Bobrovsky. Domingue is 78 overall. Let me see how good Jack Campbell is. 78. These guys haven't played just yet. That's okay. All right, so starting lineups. So we're not going to change anything. That's good. And, uh, oh, actually, no, 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 no. Let me just see Kane and what's his numbers. It still says top six for Kane. Good. And uh, Taves. It went back up to exact elite potential. How does that happen? No, I think that's a, that's that's wrong. He should be at... He should be at medium top six. There's no way it goes back up. It doesn't, it doesn't go back up, does it? Panarin, let's see. Is he dropped? No, he's still got his exact elite. All right. I don't know why that's happening. AHL, Kurt Adams is 77 overall. Kabanoff, 77. Janssen, 73. So these guys still need to play in the AHL. But uh, at 77 overall, they should be killing it now. So that's really good for us. And defenseman, 73. And now here's the big one. Goaltenders, Puninoffs. Let's see. Puninoffs is only uh, he's a legitimate 78 overall. So one more year in the uh in the ahl be useful for him seven games played one game played yeah i want to make sure opponent office is getting all the starts right seven games played yeah he's 79 overall but i don't think that's legit all right so let's continue the simulation shall we the uh the veteran chicago blackhawks who went to the stanley cup final two years ago two two years ago who lost what was it, game six or game seven? I forget. We were one or two games away from beating the Tampa Bay Lightning and getting that fourth Stanley Cup. Duncan Keith could have uh, celebrated it as well. Last year, got beat out by the Dallas Stars. They just dominated us in the playoffs. We didn't get any kind of goaltending. But this year, you know, we still have Sergei Bobrovsky as a 90-plus overall goaltender. So come the playoffs, that's going to be good for us. And uh, it seems like we have some very good offensive combinations this year. I mean, look how well we're simulating. This is great. And there you go. Another regulation loss to the Arizona Coyotes. So a 14-2-0 start to the season for Chicago. The depth is there. We have the uh, the right kind of advanced analytics. Now, I could be just blowing smoke up my own ass because you never know. We could go on a 15-game losing streak right now and everything comes back down to earth. Yeah, I mean, if you look in the last one, two, three, four, five games, it's one win, one loss, one win, one loss. There's two losses in a row in regulation. And the offense, oh, three losses in a row in regulation. All of a sudden, the month of November hasn't been very friendly to us. Where's our offense? Two goals, four. So we got shut out. Shut out against Dallas, two goals four. Shut out against Edmonton, one goal four. One goal four, two goals four. Shut out against Minnesota. All right, so the inability to score goals is starting to uh, rear its ugly head once again. The LA Kings, come on now, boys. We had such a good start to the season. Don't let that slip away from us. It's just a bad few games. I can always uh, change it up, though. Six to nothing victory. All right, so let me just get out of here. And uh, we'll take a look at all the uh, the team stats. All right, so Patrick Kane is doing fine, which means Jackson Kostopoulos is doing fine. Uh, team stats. Let's see our power play percentage, though. I was hoping that this was uh, going to be a lot better this year. So goals four per game, 2.83. Goals against per game, 2.0. So we're very good defensively if you compare us to every other team. So if that continues, that's going to be great for us. Power play percentage is 23.9. That's fine. I don't need to change that. And penalty kills, 85.7. And our last 10 were 4, 6, and 0. I mean, it's weird. Our stats are so good. They might even be influenced still from uh, from the first month. But I can't make any changes with those kind of numbers. Our, our team is playing great. The only thing I can make a change to is the 5-on-5. Five five. Jackson is a 0. Uh, plus, yeah, they're doing fine. Uh, what, how many points does Jackson have? Only 8 points in 22 games played. But he, like the thing is, Kane, well, now we can't have more points if somebody better was there. Second line, Andronov. I don't want to break up the second line. Andronov is doing great with Debrinkit and uh, Panarin. So that's working out for us. Uh, third line seems to have been turning it around a little bit. They're plus. No, they're plus. And then the fourth line. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave uh, Jackson Kostopoulos there. We need him to play. Maybe we'll get some luck. The reason he probably doesn't have as many points as uh, Kane is because he's on the point on the uh, the power play. But our power play numbers are great. It's one of those weird things. I, I don't want to really change anything. We're we're playing we're playing pretty good. Uh, ten one and zero. I mean, the last uh, ten we've gone four six and zero. But you got to think, 
that uh, that's not going to continue. We got a really good team here. So let's go another month. As I said, we're just going to take it up to the trade deadline. But I even think that this could be a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a President's Trophy uh, winning season. So Rockford player Mackenzie Wieger has been injured with a post-concussion syndrome. I will uh, replace him. It is now December 1st. Any player with uh, qualifying offers cannot be signed. All right, man, we are not, when we lose, we are not scoring goals. Look at that against the Philadelphia, look at that, look at that, back to back. So we win six to nothing. This is the thing about our stats and why they're going to be all over the place. When we win, it's like we score enough goals for two or three games, you know, six goals right there against LA. Then when we lose, we don't score anything. One goal, a four against uh, Philadelphia, shut out against uh, Florida, and then a 3-2 uh, two, two overtime loss against Edmonton, shut out again against the San Jose Sharks. We're getting shut out a lot this year. I've seen a lot of shutouts, man. What the hell? So I'm thinking maybe Jackson off that first line, but still a respectable record. 19 wins, 10 losses, and one overtime loss. See what I mean? Look, look, look at that. When we win, 8 to 5. I mean, 8 goals, that's enough for three games. And then we score one goal for 4 1 loss to the San Jose Sharks. Uh, I might be getting a little bit too critical here. Look, a one nothing. Vic, we are all over the place. But see, games like that's going to help out our defensive numbers, our penalty kill numbers, and then the 6-4 victory. It's crazy. Come on, boys. Where's just the 3-2 the wins and the 4-3 wins? Why is it always... Look, again, another one game, a one-goal game. This is crazy. There you go. That's a little bit more uh, acceptable. 4-2 loss is more than likely a 3-2 with an uh, empty netter. Let's see, against the Minnesota Wild, I didn't catch that game. And all of a sudden, 22-13-1 is not as good as a 10-1-0 start. So let me go back to the stats. I think Jackson might be an issue. We just won against the uh, Minnesota Wild. You guys might be right about Jackson Kostopoulos. He's got great numbers. He's got, yeah, point-wise, Patrick Kane should be point per game without a shadow of a doubt. So let me just go back here. All right, Jonathan Tate. Uh, hang on a second. Jonathan Taves, he's got 24 points in 37 games played. Jonathan Taves might be the one guy that I'd leave with Kane, and then i got to throw somebody else. Jackson Kostopoulos, he's got uh, 19 points in 35 games played. Now, it's only on pace for like a 40, 45-point season, playing alongside of Patrick Kane. All right, let me take a look at his individual stats. See, he doesn't take shots. He's not a shot taker. Uh, but he's like, those are such good takeaway to giveaway numbers, man. He can be trusted defensively. So if if Taves, maybe Taves and Kostopoulos shouldn't be on the same line because they're the same type of player. Uh, the second line, all right, so I'm going to put Panarin back with Taves, all right. Uh, Andronov, I'm going to move you down. Andronov was doing good right there. See, I can't put Andronov and Kostopoulos together, even though Andronov might take shots. Hang on a second. Let's see Andronov shots. He's got 78 shots. He's got a great shooting percentage. That's the reason. 78 shots. Compare that to Kane, who's got 140. Yeah, okay, never mind. So Andronov doesn't really take shots either. Kostopoulos, how many shots did he have? 40-something? Or did he have 70? 53. So putting Kostopoulos and Andronov on the same line, that's I don't think it's going to work either. i got to get another shooter. Uh, Bjorkstrand, I'd imagine. He takes shots 85. Who takes more, Bjorkstrand or Nemestikov? Probably, yeah, Bjorkstrand. All right, so Bjorkstrand, you're going to go up here. All right, Andronov is going to be dropped down with Nick Schmaltz and Mesnikov. All right, Kostopoulos is going to go with Debrinkit and Bjorkstrand. We have two playmakers on this line now, but that might be okay. We'll have to wait and see. So Andronov, keep an eye on Andronov's stats. All right, 13, 12, and 8 for plus minus. I'm not going to change the power player penalty kill, but uh, Jackson Kostopoulos seems to be holding back Patrick Kane a little bit. So we're going to go with Taves, Panarin, and Kane. And then Jackson is going to go with Debrinkit and Bjorkstrand, right? So Bjorkstrand's goal totals and Debrinkit's goal totals should go up. But, uh, I mean, you guys can say what you want about Jackson Kostopoulos. Did you not see those defensive numbers? Those de The defensive takeaway numbers? I mean, those are absolutely filthy. We just got to find... Like, if I was starting fresh, you know, that'd be a great player to put alongside of a franchise sniper. I just think... I think it would work with Kane, but I think you need another uh, playmaker in there, not Taves. And if it's Taves' his last year with Kane, we're going to go with him. So one more month... And then we'll have the final month before the free uh, or the trade deadline. Let's just see. We're 10 games above 500. Let's see what these uh, what these do for us. All right, so Maxim Puninovs, our, uh, our elite goaltender in the AHL, has been injured with a broken ankle. I'm going to replace player. There you go. 4 nothing loss. Oh, those line changes and we don't get another goal, man. Oh, my God. Having a tough time scoring goals. Look, again, one goal, four. Man, this is rough. I got Panarin. Taves and Kane back together. Maybe it should be Debrinkit and uh, Panarin and Kane again. Pro scout on the line. All right. So uh, we're uh, we're hitting the mid-season blues right now. A 3-2 loss. We can't get on a winning streak. 
Uh, the extended three-plus game winning streak, we just can't get on. And so the, the regulation losses are piling up. We keep on losing two in a row. Two in a row, two in a row, one, then a win, then two in a row again. Oh, my God. Come on, Chicago. We're definitely not going to win the Preds. Look, look at this three in a row in regulation. What the hell is going on? Okay, hang on. Four in a row in regulation. Okay, we need to change the lines again. I was having better, uh, better numbers with those old five-on-five -five lines. I can't get going here. I just can't get this team going. Too many, like, we don't have enough shooters on this team. So let me go. I'm going to try Jackson Kostopoulos. Taves, you're coming off that first line. We're going to go back with Dabrinkit. All right, Kane and Kostopoulos. All right, Panarin, Taves, and uh, Panarin does take some shots. So I'm going to go Andronov. Yeah, we're going to link up that third line again. Andronov with Taves and Panarin because he was the passer, the two-way guy, and the sniper. All right, so we'll try that out. We'll see how that works. Kostopoulos, though, not getting it done for us, man. Not in minus four now. You guys might be right. Can't find a spot for him. Fuck, man. He, he, he looks like he's going to be such a good player. I mean, his, his defensive numbers are great. Ah, all right, so he's with the bring Kitten Kane now. He's got, like, the two best offensive threats to, to play alongside of. Let's see what he can do for us. We'll take it all the way up to the trade deadline. Can we stop these losing streaks? And can we go on a, oh, my God, a 7-3 to three loss? What the hell has happened? We started the year 10-1-0, and, and all of a sudden now we're 26-22. and 22? Another overtime loss. There you go, a 3-1 victory. This is a weird freaking season, man. We started off on fire. I thought for sure I put together a great team. Maybe it was just the line changes that I made. They actually hurt the uh, simulation. Oh, my God. So frustrating. All right, come on. Give me uh, at least some hope before now in the trade deadline. Let me know that I don't need to make too many changes. Rockford player Boris Kavanov. All right, so that's another guy in the AHL has gone down. The AHL squad is just getting shredded with injuries this season. A shootout loss, an overtime loss. Uh, Boris Kavanov is back. Yeah, let me throw him in there. Varlamov. I think it was this Peltier guy. Kavanov was the center. Yeah, there it is. All right, get your ass in there. Uh, any AHL players? No, they're not ready to go just yet. And any defensemen? No, they're not ready to go. So let's continue our simulation. Come on now, don't don't uh, don't put us out of a playoff spot. My God, man, what is going on? Maxime Puninov is available to play. I want to make sure that this guy gets all the ice time he can get. He's going to be the replacement for Sergei Bobrovsky. So Sandstrom? No, it's going to be you, Puninov. 78 overall still. He's going to be put right back in there. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again. All right, three, two, oh my God. Maxime putting up, oh my God. Assistant coach replaced player. They didn't even have a freaking game on the day versus Ottawa. Everything is going to shit right now. Shootout loss, overtime loss, regulation loss, a two nothing victory. When we win, we're not scoring goals, man. Come on, boys. Up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, a 2-1 shootout win. Yeah, we're not scoring goals. It might be good for the playoff simulation, but right now we are not scoring any goals. Columbus Blue Jackets, 28-26-3. There you go. All right. So it's been a while since we've won four in a row. That feels nice. Let's get a nice little winning streak on. I think uh, you can say what you want about these lines, but I think uh, Jackson Kostopoulos on the first with Kane and then Taves on the second. I think that's the right way to go. And then the third line, Nemesnikov, Schmaltz, and Bjorkstrand. I think uh, that's what we had at the beginning, and that was working just fine. Then we tried shaking it up a little bit and started to lose. But now that I've gone back to the original, just not uh, – Taves on the first line anymore. He's back on the second. Yeah, we're starting to win. All right, so we had a four-game winning streak. Then we lost one in reg. Now we're back to two in a row, three in a row. This is more like it. All right, so seven, one, and uh, seven, one, and zero oh in our last eight. Eight, one, and zero oh in our last nine. Let's see. Last one, nine, one, and zero oh in our last ten. All right, so we had a little bit of a uh, a stumble there in the middle of the season, but we are clearly a playoff team. Thirty-seven wins, twenty-two losses, and four overtime losses. Uh, it's just about finding the right lineups right here. Uh, it seems like uh, everyone's going to have a little bit less than point per game because we have a deep team. But uh, I think overall we're, we're scoring enough goals. I don't know. It's, it's so weird, though. Like it's it's. I think the, the stats are going to look fine here. Chicago, 2.5. No, okay, so we could be scoring a little bit more than uh, what we are. The other teams are above three. Colorado, Winnipeg, Nashville. We could be scoring a lot more, but we're a real good defensive team. Now, Winnipeg's scary. 3.08 goals for per game and a 2.18 goals against. Our goals against is fantastic, so and that's going to really help us out come the, uh, the playoffs. Our power play percentage, 20.4. That's fine. I mean, our power play shouldn't change, and our penalty kill is fine. It's our five on five. I just can't find the right five on. It might be our blue line as well. We might not have any of those studs on the blue line. That could be holding us back from getting that real good five on five production, right? So player stats. Let me just go to this quickly. 
Let me sort by forwards. All right, so Panarin's having a great season. He's a plus 21. I do not need to change up Panarin. He can play on that uh, on that second line with Jonathan Taves all day. Patrick Kane, 47 points in 63. Be nice if uh, he was playing a little bit better. But he is suffering because he doesn't have Panarin and, uh, what's his name, to bring Kit on his same line. And Dronoff, all right, so this guy has been a great surprise for us. Now, if you compare him to Kostopoulos, Kostopoulos only has taken 98 shots so far. And Dronoff has taken 145. So he's definitely more of a shooter, even though he's a playmaker. He's got a 24-goal season. So Valerie and Dronoff seems to be a very good player. Uh, plus 24. Him and Panarin are doing great, and now Taves is on that line. So Andronov, Panarin, and Taves seems to be tearing it up. Uh, Dabrinkit, those are fine numbers. Again, they'll probably go up now that he's on the first line. Uh, Nemestikov, a minus two on line three is fine. Jackson Kostopoulos, a minus two. He's got 28 points. He's got a lot of assists. I just cannot find. Maybe we should just have him on the third line and just use him as the, the best penalty killer in the NHL. Because look at his takeaways to giveaways. 97 takeaways to 18 giveaways, boys. Uh, and he throws the body. I mean, Jackson, he's, he's a sell. This guy, he could win a Selkie. We could have our first player winning Selkies. That's, those are those numbers are incredible. Uh, Mick Schmaltz, Bjorkstrand, all right, they're dropping off a little bit. Bjorkstrand can't, really can't find any space for him on this team. But uh, if you guys look at the power play points, we still have like 20 games to go. And yeah, 16 power play points. So uh, the power play numbers are getting back up there. Good. All right, so we are at the trade deadline. What should we be doing? I just want to go back to my uh, line changes. Hang on a second. Edit lines. I want to see the AHL squad. Has anyone grown? So there's the NHL squad. What about our blue liners? Bockfist, see what I mean? Bockfist is only 86 overall. He might have dropped or he might have uh, capped off. If we had like a 90 overall defenseman, just one of them, I think that would really push us over the top. Goaltenders, Bobrovsky, he's having a good season, a 9.32 save percentage. All right, so the team is doing just fine. Um, the AHL, Kabanoff is 79 overall depth. All right, so I might have a playmaker. Another guy with 99 overall for passing. We got all these playmakers and two-way forwards. I need, I need snipers. I need guys like this who just shoot the puck and shoot it a lot. All right, so nobody, yeah, it's not really anyone. Koivu's up to 74 overall, that's good. And Puninov, he's going to be, oh, he broke his ankle, right? He's going to be out for a while, that's not good. So what do you guys think? We're simulating well, we're going to get into the playoffs, but uh, are we a championship-bound team? If, if Sergei Bobrovsky plays the way he needs to, we have the depth, but is the blue line good enough? I wouldn't be opposed to making a big-time trade for a, a stud blue liner if, they're available. So I have my first, I have my second. Uh, let's go through each team. And this is going to be the uh, the last trade deadline of this, this Stanley Cup window. All right. We've got to make something happen. It's got to be this year. It's not going to be, we're not going to have a, any better of a chance to win it than this year. All right. So hang on a sec. Let me just search. Buffalo. Nope. Uh, nope. No, I don't need anybody in the 70s. If there's somebody like 88 overall or 90 overall defenseman and it's a lot of trade value, I might do it. Essa Lindell, 84 overall. No, nah, I don't need any Don't need any depth at this point. We have plenty of depth. If I'm going to make a trade, it's got to be a guy who can make a difference. All right. Last year, we made it with Nino Niederreiter, but I would even be willing to go further than that. Here we go. Ryan Johansson, 87 overall. Three years left at 8.8. .8. There's no way I can afford that deal. Uh, maybe if I got them to retain some salary, but uh, that's not going to work out for us, all right? Arvidsson, Bjugstad, Kovalchuk, no. That's just not going to work out. I'm looking for a defenseman, a big-time blue liner. Brady Shea, here we go. Brady Shea, 87 overall, two years left. All right, and then Shattenkirk's also in there, offensive defenseman. We don't need Shattenkirk, but Brady Shea, if I put him on the team, I think I can afford him. Right, so let's say, and I would have to trade like a roster defenseman back. So a left-handed, maybe a guy like Ekholm has got one year left. He's 32. All right, so you go Ekholm, and then you go in some draft picks in there, and you upgrade to Brady Shea. We can make it work. Brady Shea, boys, two more years left, 5.7. That would be a big increase uh, to our uh, five-on-five offense. Now, I don't know his individual stats. Let's take a look at his, uh, his game or his uh, simulation stats. Doesn't get too many points. Don't worry about the minuses. Doesn't take too many penalties. Uh, let's see, is he more of a defensive guy? Yeah, he'll do it all, but uh, he is offensive, actually. Yeah, that's a, no, that's a good defender. That's somebody who just five-on-five five defender. So what I would do is I would put Brady Shea alongside of uh, Bockfist, and then Sanheim would play alongside of uh, Yoka Harju, right? So Brady Shea would be somebody I'd be willing to trade for, boys. You let me know what you think about that. Let's continue, though. 
skaters matching the block. Uh, Bobby Ryan, no thank you. Uh, Wayne Simmons, JVR, Tyler Myers, no. We already have that depth. We don't need John Klinberg. Here we go. Four years left, 89 overall, right-handed defenseman. Here's the thing. He's offensive. We already have Bockvist and Yokoharju. That trade value is a little bit too high. I still say Brady Shea is the better uh, choice right there. Because, uh, I mean, you're talking about Bockvist and a first for... Uh, Klinberg right there. You're not going to get him for any much more. Or you know what? Maybe even Yoka Harju. Because Yoka Harju might have capped off. He's only a top four. So hang on a second. We know the Brady Shea one. We probably make that one work as well. Da oh, what time? What team was... Shit. Hang on a second. I forget which team he was on. thought he was just on Dallas. Uh, Rangers. That's Shea. Ottawa. Philly. Pittsburgh. All right. So they got him signed for four years. 89 overall. He's 30 years of age. So, I mean, four years at 30 years of age is fine. It'll take him up till 33, 34. Uh, he's definitely going to be that offensive defenseman that would help out the power play and also help out Patrick Kane getting points. I mean, yeah, he gets a shit ton of assists. 73 points in year number one. So this guy would help us out. And uh, if you're going to do this trade, it, would ha it wouldn't be Ekholm. It would have to be like a guy like Yoka Harju. So hang on. Let me go back to defenseman. All right. It would have to be like Yoka Harju and a first just to start to get the trade value up there. So you hold on to Bockfist and you trade Yokoharju because Yokoharju is our second offensively based defenseman. So it's either Yokoharju for Klinberg, all right, and we're losing seven years of off or, uh, of gameplay, or not gameplay, seven years of a career of a defenseman. Klinberg is 30, Yokoharju is 23, or it's Brady Shea for Ekholm, and we're actually saving years on that because Ekholm is older, and we have another year after this at 5.7. So if we get into cap problems, we can always trade him. But we won't have cap problems because we're losing $21 million this year when Kane, Taves, and even uh, Bobrovsky's 9 mil can trade him. So uh, what do you guys think? I say Brady Shea for Ekholm in like a first or something. But uh, I will wait to see what you guys have to say. Let me know and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Fernandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to shit all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card, first inning